The resources of DX University and Indexa bring you de-expedition planning. What you as a DXer need to know when a de-expedition takes you to a distant shore for that rare, exciting contact. There are many, many aspects of de-expedition planning. Since de-expeditions vary widely in their scope and scale, their planning also varies greatly. There are the routine issues, how the de-expedition will land, the antennas they will use, how they will shelter themselves, their power source and requirements, and how the stations will be equipped. There are unique environmental considerations. The 115 degree Fahrenheit or 45 degree centigrade temperatures of Navassa required special preparation. The heat plus the hard physical work of climbing at Mount Palo added additional planning challenges. Heat stroke and electrolyte imbalance were constant threats. There is complex travel to distant and isolated places. That travel may involve high, rough seas and even pack ice. And failing to plan for the weather you may encounter may be fatal. Sometimes landings must include helicopters. Plans to mitigate risk, manage the added expense, and maximize efficiency must be in place. You must ask yourself, is this team physically capable of the requirements the environment will demand of them? There will be hard, arduous work demanding a healthy cardiovascular system. Isolation, living in cramped quarters, constantly struggling to adapt to what Mother Nature hurls at you with great force will stress the team, not only physically but mentally as well. How will this team deal with the constant stresses? A fractured team in a hostile environment is a recipe for disaster. You must also be able to rely on a team's ability to interface and work with environmental advocates, be they governmental or private. Ask, will this team destroy chances of future de-expeditions? Or can this team negotiate, compromise, and generate goodwill? So if de-expedition plans bring together the right physical resources, a desired DX location, a team with complementary social, radio, environmental, and practical skills, we are well on our way to having a good de-expedition. Good things are likely to happen. Even though the challenges are great, the team will have a positive outcome. Let's think about this a little more. Why is all this important to you, the DXer? And what other things should you be looking for in a de-expedition? Today's de-expeditions to rare and remote places on our planet cost money. A lot of money. De-expeditions ask you to contribute money and I encourage you to do so. Because without your financial support, these trips would not happen. But something happens when you write that check. You move from a passive position to an equity position. You've invested in that de-expedition. You become a stockholder. And when you've made an investment, what is it that you do not want to happen? You do not want to get burned, do you? So what do you do? You read the prospectus. You look at the plan of the de-expedition. De-expeditions begin as dreams. Usually a dream of one individual or a few individuals thinking of some faraway rare place. And usually, and appropriately, we know nothing of those dreams. But dreams must be converted into reality and into planning, defining the scope, scale, and budget of the de-expedition. Again, we seldom know of this early planning, and indeed dreams and early plans are not good investment material. When initial plans yield a reasonable budget and define the scope and scale of the de-expedition, it is then appropriate to recruit a team. All the ducks are now lined up. The importance of a de-expedition team cannot be overstated. Leaders should choose their team members wisely, and just as importantly, team members should choose their leaders wisely. The team should be functional, compatible, mission-orientated, and it needs a critical mass of experience and talent. 
the potential is there for becoming the best of friends or the worst of enemies. Just as a new stock makes an initial public offering, it is now appropriate for the de-expedition to go public and ask for your financial support if they choose. You as a contributor, an investor, know what you are entitled to know. Where, who, when, and what. Transportation, permits, and budgets should all be secure. If you were to invest in a business, you would want that business to be properly structured. You would not want this pyramid turned upside down. Likewise, look for a properly organized de-expedition based on propagation. Propagation will define everything. The number and types of antennas, the number of stations, computers, and generators, the number of operators needed, essentially your entire infrastructure. If you see this type of organization, let's get a few guys, throw up some antennas and see what we hear. With no regard for propagation planning, things are likely to fall apart. Perhaps your checkbook best stay in your pocket. Look for well-planned and properly structured de-expeditions. De-expeditions are like icebergs. Some are large, some are small one or two man operations. But in each case, it's what's below the waterline, what you don't see at first glance, that holds the whole thing up. This is where the data lives. And you as a supporter, an investor in a de-expedition, have the right to look here and scrutinize the planet. This is, after all, a partnership. De-expeditions provide us with vicarious thrills and excitement, but are dependent upon the support of the DX community. In return for that support, the DX community is entitled to a voice and to the de-expedition's best efforts and planning. Thank you for your attention. We encourage you to attend one of DX University's sessions offered at major DX meetings and to help INDEXA support de-expeditions. Visit the websites at dxuniversity.com and indexa.org. 73, and we'll see you on the air.